Hey, good morning guys. I'm Steve Luttrell. Welcome to my channel, The Real Deal, where I talk about your hair loss, why you've lost your hair, and is there anything you can do to get it back. Welcome to my segment, Coffee Chat, where we talk about a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I give you some tips, my favorite products, we talk about your hair loss, whatever you guys want to talk about, let me know in the comment section below and we'll have those conversations in the morning. So, so again, this is coffee chat. This is just a quick morning, have coffee together and uh, have a few quick conversations about uh, your hair loss and, and restoring your hair and what you can do about it, guys. Um, all right, so this morning we wanna talk about the self-realization of losing your hair. Now, that's a big step is to look in the mirror and look at yourself and go, I think I'm losing my hair. So that's huge because the denial of that could be a long time. I mean, with popularity of hats and shaving your head, it really has become quite fashionable sometimes to be bald for people that aren't bald. Um, because the people that are bald they only have one fashion and that's bald. Uh, they don't have hair options of shaving it off or growing it back, growing it long. So, uh, so the self-realization of losing your hair is huge. Actually, very, very huge. Um, it's mentally draining on you. Um, you think about it all the time. So, <clears throat> You know, the self-realization of it is really, really, really huge, all right? So now that you've realized that you're losing your hair, or your hair is starting to thin, um, is the why and what. So now you've come to the point of realizing that maybe your hair is thinning out a little bit and uh, what can I do about it? Um, is there any way I can stop it, slow it down, fix it? Something, please help me. Um, and that's why I'm here to help you a little bit in this journey of hair loss and hair restoration. Um, so that decision making of I've got to do something is the first step in a forward motion because there's a lot of denial. People go on for a long time without realizing they lose their hair. I did it myself. Um, I camouflaged it with perm and combing my hair a certain way and I was never a hat person but all these things come into factor that you basically are going to deny uh, there's no way I'm losing my hair so making that decision that you are going to do something is huge um, it's a huge step forward in restoring your hair and getting your hair back so now that you've made that decision that maybe your hair is thinning and you would like to do something about it where do you start Huge question, huge question. Today, most people start with the internet. Uh, they Google, YouTube, watch videos, hear people's testimonials, um, hear people's or studios or companies that promise you that they're gonna restore your hair loss or you watch a YouTube video that says if you dip your head in certain things that will grow your hair back crazy, right? Uh, the snake oil, I call that. Um, so it can be very, very overwhelming. And that's one of the reasons I started this channel is that when I first got in the hair industry, the sales gimmicks, the powerful sales tactics that were sold to you, the guy suffering from hair loss, I thought was terrible. Um, I built my reputation on you liking me, your friends liking me, and that's how I built my hair growth clientele. When I got into the hair replacement industry, uh, the client doesn't go tell everybody that, hey, I go to Steve and, and he replaces my hair and this is a toupee wig and all those wonderful things. That doesn't happen. Um, in regular growth hair, um, somebody goes, hey, I love your haircut. Where do you get that haircut at? And you go, oh, I go to Steve and he, he's great and here's his phone number and that's a different world. Hair loss, hair restoration. Oops, almost spilled my coffee. Hair restoration, um, you have a lot of predators that prey on 
your needs and that's not good. So again, that's why I started this channel. It can be very overwhelming. I hope to bring you guys valuable information so you don't have to go all over the place and find little paths and little ways down a way that is not going to give you anything other than empty your pockets and stress you out. Makes you lose more hair. So where you start can be overwhelming. And it all depends upon your hair loss, your hair loss situation, and also your financial situation. Um, hair restoration can be very expensive. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, insurance doesn't cover it for the most part, unless it's medically related. And that's, you gotta make sure your language is really right when you're turning this into your insurance company. Uh, but for the most part, when it comes to just vanity of you're losing your hair, uh, insurance is not gonna cover that. So. So where do you start? Um, well, a good place to start is right here on my channel, Hair Loss Consultant, the real deal. Um, but the best place to start is look at everything with an open mind, go to the internet, look at different things, go to different consultations. If they're too quick to close you and get your money and make you sign on the dotted line before you leave that first consultation, um, that's a big red flag for me. Uh, you don't wanna just sign away. You wanna make sure you're getting what you want because I've seen many people that go in and, and they have a little bit of hair loss and these places will just shave the whole top of their head which they only had a little bit of recession and maybe a little thinning in the front, but back here they were good. But they shaved the whole thing and now this guy's committed to hair because tomorrow he can't just take this off and have this runway down the middle of his head. So, so again, where you start, make sure you educate yourself. Don't make rash decisions. Make sure the person or the place you're going to is credible. Make sure the product is credible. Make sure it's not going to hurt or damage you down the road. Uh, there is no real quick fix uh, when it comes to lotions and potions and all these kind of things. Nothing is just gonna instantly the next day grow your hair back. So just let the buyer beware um, when you go and look at these things. Hopefully, down the road, you'll find some information that I give you that will help you make that decision. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to address these questions and these tactics and techniques that is out there that promises you, that promises you to restore your hair. I need more coffee. Um, so, so that's it for that part of our session this morning. And uh, so let's go over to the next part. Steve's favorite toys or tools. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about adhesive brushes. Brushes that you apply the adhesive to your scalp. All right, now personally, I like disposable brushes. Um, I tried to be a little green uh, in the beginning and wash my brushes on a regular basis. The problem is you have to put them in something that breaks down the adhesive, which sometimes doesn't always remove itself from the bristles of the brush that you're using. Foam brushes I'm not a big fan of. Um, I don't think the application is smooth. Uh, they grab the skin a little bit. Uh, and I don't think that the precision that you need or the preciseness that you need sometimes to get into a corner can be done with a foam brush. Just a little too balky and a little too gawky, if you ask me. Uh, my favorite brushes are these little aluminum brushes. You can see them here, okay? Um, they're great. They come in two sizes. They come in this one here that's about eh, two inches long and this one here that's about, oh, I don't know, six inches long, I guess, somewhere in there. And, uh, and they're just basically mechanical brushes, but uh, you can get them at, I personally get them at Walker Tape. Uh, I like the product when it comes to this and they come in big packages, so you get quite a few brushes, so you can just throw them away when you're done. You don't have to worry about washing them. All right, guys? Um, much more hygienic, clean, easier to use. What I like about it is you have two different sizes. You have the small one, and the bigger one. And for the bigger one to apply adhesive all over the scalp, it's much, much better because you cover a lot more area. 
The small one is great to travel with for little touch-ups or for maybe that morning that just, it's up a little bit in the edge and you just wanna get that edge up a little bit and uh, put a little adhesive there. That is great for this. Again, I love these brushes. You can get them from Walker Tape. They're real, it's relatively inexpensive. That makes them disposable. But, uh, but these are my two favorite brushes for applying adhesive, guys. All right, favorite product, favorite toys, favorite tools. These things are great. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about now is let me set my coffee down so I don't spill it. <laughs> um, brushes that you don't want to use, okay? So these are two brushes that I particularly don't particularly care for. This one is a round brush that has what I call needle bristles. Very sharp, pointy, thin bristles all over it. The problem with this brush is that these bristles can very easily, especially if you're wearing a 0.03 millimeter base, skin base, it can easily grab and tear the system. If you have just a pinhole and this thing grabs it, it will tear it, guaranteed. Um, so I'm not a real particular fan of these kind of brushes that have really tiny, tiny bristles on them. Um, they can do more damage to the base of the system. Lace, not as much a lace hair system, but it can grab the knots and undo, start doing the knots. All right, so again, not one of my favorite brushes. Um, these other brushes here, there's more vent type brush that has tiny little balls on the end of it that maybe makes it a little bit more user friendly than this one, but at the end of the day, the balls are really, really, really small on these brushes. So again, it can very easily, as you're brushing the hair and blow drying the hair, it can very easily get caught into a pinhole or a small tear that you might not even know you have on the base of the system. Um, but if it does tear the base of the system, you're kind of screwed. And I'll cover that in another video about how to repair the system if you do get a small tear. There's a quick fix for that. Check out my one, one of my other videos for that uh, down the road. We'll be doing that video. So you want to stay away from these two brushes. They just might cause you more harm than good. All right, guys. All right, guys. So that wraps up today's coffee chat. Hope you enjoy our little short segment this morning. And uh, hopefully you got a couple things out of it, maybe, maybe not. Um, but somebody, I'm sure, gets something out of this. Um, if you have any comments or anything you'd like to hear about in my coffee chat session or maybe one of my other longer videos, uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you've liked what you've seen today, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm Steve Luttrell, your hair loss consultant, and this has been The Real Deal Coffee Chat. Have a great hair day, guys.